So we have antique geopolymers. These antique geopolymers must have must follow a prerequisite. They must be easy to implement. We must have mineral resources in great quantities. This is a technology that is not concrete. It is not regular gypsum. There is no cement added to the system. And we are not using crushed stone. On the opposite, we are using the knowledge from geopolymer, from geosynthesis, from geochemistry, from mineralogy, from geology, and we are using naturally weathered stone instead of crushed stone. In the case of the Giza uh, material, uh, we have an agglomerated stone that is a mixture of 95 to 97% by weight of limestone that are shells, fossil shells and calcite, to which we add 3 to 5% by weight of a geological glue that is a geopolymer. So this will explain why geologists see nothing. You see in the literature dealing uh, with uh, the uh, contradiction of uh, my theory and you see in several uh, papers uh, written on the internet that it is very easy to look at a stone and to detect if it is a natural or a artificial one. Wrong. This is not the case for geopolymeric limestone and it is not the case for the Egyptian limestone blocks that are making the pyramids. And I have to uh, uh, show that uh, in fact each time that uh, geologists or mineralogists are looking at this type of stone and claiming it will be very easy to detect that uh, they are not made of uh, uh, the system that I am uh, claiming, that is uh, reagglomeration, uh, they uh, fall in the pitfall of the thin section, optical analysis. What is the problem here? The problem is that we are dealing with a material that is an aggregation of fossil shells. You see here the shells that are constituting uh, the pyramid blocks, we have 95% of shells and in between a very tiny amount of uh, the binder that is called micritic binder. So when you make a thin section, it is obvious that what you see are the natural elements, that is, the shells. 95% of what you have on the uh, you microscope plinth is natural shells. And we are just discussing the 5% that are constituting uh, the microtic binder, the geological glue. And if you don't look at the geological glue very precisely, you see nothing. At the beginning, I had to study some stones, some genuine stones, and I discovered on this uh, lower sample here the presence of strange artifacts that I called filaments. And then we have a lot of air bubble. This is a stone that is covered with a synthetic coating. This was in 1982, and then after, for several reasons, uh, essentially, after 1990, I stopped doing any research on uh, this material and it had been only on the uh, year 2001-2002 that we uh, started again uh, to reconstitute uh, limestone blocks uh, like uh, the ones that we find at the pyramids and we made several limestone artifacts in the laboratory and we will see later uh, in great quantities, and we took uh, these uh, reagglomerated limestone made in 2002 to 
to two different geological renowned laboratories in France. The first one was the Bureau de Recherche Geologique. This is the BRGM. This is the French Geological Survey. And the second at the, the Museum of uh, Natural History in Paris at the Geological Department. We gave them two samples of uh, the limestone that we had re-agglomerated in our laboratory at the Geopolymer Institute in Saint Quentin, France. And we told them, look, we found this type of limestone that seemed to be strange for us. Could you tell us what it is really about uh, these stones? They made a thin section, they wrote a report, and this is what they got. This is the thin section of what we gave them. Oh, uh, obviously, you see the big numelit, then other uh, natural artifacts like the quartz or the echinids, and in between the micritic binder. The micritic binder is a binder that is made of very small uh, particles of calcite, and they claim that this was the a thin section of a natural pneumolytic limestone. This piece of artifact was made in our lab and had up to 10% by weight of modern geopolymer. They could not detect it under the optical microscope. The binder that we used to re-agglomerate the stone had been coined, claimed to be natural micritic binder. So if I don't say, if I don't tell that the piece of limestone has been made in our laboratory, geologists and mineralogists will claim, will state that it is a natural stone and this is also the case for uh, the uh, samples that we got from the Egyptian monuments. So I asked my scientific colleagues to look at a way in order to try to determine the artificial uh, nature of uh, the microtic binder of uh, the geological glue. And the only way to do it, the practical way to do it, is to use electron microscopy. This has been done recently by a group of uh, three scientists, Michael Barzoom, R. Gangli from Drexel University in the US, and Gilles Hugues from the CNRS in Paris in France. Uh, they uh, published in December 2006 in the Journal of the American Ceramic Society the results of uh, the analysis on the electron microscopy and they claimed microstructural evidence of reconstituted limestone. You'll find additional information in my recent book, They Built the Pyramids, and also in uh, the book Geopolymer Chemistry and Applications.